Now, I found this at the store today, and I was like, hey, why not? It seems like fun. Oh, wrong. Wrong camera. See if y'all can see it. Oh, it's completely sideways. But it'll fit there for while I assemble it. This right here is just a simple puzzle I found at Walmart, of all places. Um, simple 100-piece puzzle, but it's Batman. Like... Just look at that stunning, simple, artistic style. And the shades of blue and blacks and a little bit of red to make it pop. Like, I was like, how can you not want to do a puzzle like this? Like, and think of how relaxing it's going to be. I'm going to bust it out. We'll just hang out together. Do a little puzzling. Come talk about your day. What you did for the weekend. Hang out with me. Try to get this puzzle open. Make sure what kind of box they did it, because this paper is wrapped all the way around the box. Because I'm not currently feeling the edge of the box top versus bottom. Hopefully it's... That's a really thin box. I was like, why is this so hard to find it? Oof. The good thing is it was brand new, so I'm guaranteed to not be missing pieces. And if I am, that's gonna be upsetting. Uh, let's go ahead and switch this camera view for y'all. Um see if I can change the stream title. See if I can figure it out over here in actual Twitch. Show me my tools. I don't know. Well, we finished the game. We'll be hanging out now for those who want to see a puzzle. this to and if I have to adjust my cameras as I do this so y'all can see the whole puzzle we'll do that and this is a very thin cardboard box which they paper wrapped the whole thing instead of doing a plastic like they wrapped this paper all the, and glued it on the outside of the box and then this piece of back paper covered how they fold over. I'm not super impressed with that style of wrapping, but on the one hand it did limit the amount of excess plastic they used, so I'm not going to dock them too much for that. This is for a cardinal puzzle. Oh, whoa. Look at how that cardboard came out. very inexpensive box, put it that way. See if we can show that off on screen. There we go. And then hopefully I can fit the whole puzzle within the frame. It being only 100 pieces, it should be relatively easy to do. These aren't super tiny pieces. We'll see how it looks. Tell me, how, how do y'all like to sort puzzle pieces? Do you do color? Do you do borders? I'm a border and then type pieces. So I'm going to just sort out all these borders, sort out all the non borders. And then I'll go from there.
And of course, I like to try to flip my pieces as I'm sorting, especially if they're going to be this big of a piece. I didn't realize the pieces would be this big. I'm used to puzzles with a lot smaller pieces, so this should be relatively easy, relaxing, and straightforward to do. Last puzzle I was working on, which I actually still have on this table under these game mats, is a thousand piece puzzle, I believe, but it, of course, the pieces were a lot smaller. But it was a Sherlock Holmes style puzzle where you're solving a mystery, given a story, and given the puzzle, but not shown the picture for the puzzle itself. So you have to figure out what pi the picture is as you're solving the puzzle. And I still actually need to finish that. Actually, I, I kind of want to show off how it's under here. Because I got a couple of gaming mats on here. So as you can see, it's way under here. I need to get back to that. Definitely not a short stream style puzzle. I'm going to push the non-border pieces to the side. I'll leave them over here. And then let's figure out just how big this puzzle is going to be. So look at what the size it was supposed to be. 11 by 15. So, uh, I like being in the gym, I like to just verify and check. 15 will fit on screen. What's our on table? So it's, okay. As is, will just fit within frame. So I don't have to adjust my cameras, which is nice. So let's do some quick turning, sorting, so we can see all these beautiful, vibrant pops of color. We'll just start making our puzzle. So, post in chat how you've been this, how you've been doing, what you've been up to this weekend, what games you've been playing, if you like to do puzzles, if you like to do other stuff, what you want to see more on my channel. The trick with a puzzle like this. Okay, so I got four corners. Um, one, two, three, of course. Where's my other corner? What am I not seeing? Here it is. Four corners. Blue, blue, darker, darker. I don't know. These are all four corners. These are black. So I wonder if it's not showing the full picture. Um, the only problem with this style of puzzle is it can be obvious the orientation of some of these puzzle pieces because of the way it's made. Because most of these, the elongated side is going to be running with the vertical edge of the puzzle. So, that, so you could take all of these, turn them. Now, they may end up upside down or rotated 180, but in general, you can tell they're going to be turned in a very particular direction just because of the length of them. So this is a simple little trick you can use when solving puzzles. If the type of puzzle is manufactured in this way, you can typically tell which direction your corners, your each piece is going to run when aligned. So now I want to set my bottom corner over here on screen for y'all. So it's going to be about here, give or take. And I'll work off of that because it just had printing on it. So for manufacturing stuff. So I do know this is going to be this corner. And then I can work off that if I want. I got these are for the corners. I know that one's going to be that direction. I have one, two options here. This one is in that angle. It's likely going to be like that. This one could easily be top corner or bottom corner. These two are going to be the interchangeable options until I figure out the colors. Uh, let's see, looking at 
cross cross fading of colors. Blues and reds. Most of our blues and reds are on the right side of our mat with extreme reds. Take a quick, quick look. Hopefully it's the right picture because what I'm seeing so far seems off. Oh, that's why. That's a better representation of what we should be making. So, the front picture was very zoomed in. That's why I was like, wait, this doesn't make sense. Okay, so now I have a better view of this red with blue streaking. It should be along the right edge. About three quarters up. We're going to have a good blue-red black transition down here. And then potentially this red streak is going to be at the top corner. Um, looks like most of the red is going to be only this side, so that could easily go right there. Does it fit our corner? Because we're close. Yep. Red spec. Do those actually match? I don't think. I'm not sure if that's going to be right. That seems very short so far. Well, it's. A little over 12 inches, and we're looking for a total of 15. Yeah, so I'm only going to get two or three more pieces right there. I'm just used to slightly bigger puzzles. That's probably why I'm, I'm being thrown off by this. Still a lot of blues that hit the edge or left side and potentially bottom. So blues. Here and here, start testing connections. There's a good one. Oh, I'm seeing the blue speck in that. I'm thinking bottom for that one. I'm thinking this is going to be this one up here. This is, needs to be a vertical orientation. I guess. find the red tip. Oh, my rotations might be a little off guessed. Oh, there's red in that. There we go. Seems to match. It's as close as I'm seeing. A little bit of blue on that. Blue pop. Something like that. I'm just doing that general test until it works technique. Oh, I see a little bit of writing on that edge. There we go. So we do know the corner's going to be close to there if that's the right piece for that corner. Where did I put that corner down? Potentially here. Approximately, I can start shifting these in uh, about a third over, do it just about right there. Red and blue speck, it's either bottom or top. That's good for this one. There we go, bottom. Start sorting these if they're going to be vertical edge or horizontal edge. 
or likelihood of it. No guarantee. Is that much? Oh, it does. It's likely only getting more and more down here. No. Finding our extents now. I think that matches. Yep, finding our extents. Let's do a quick size check. Approximate. Oh, I need to screw it in even more because it's supposed to be about 11. Okay, there we go. There's a good indication of the space we'll be filling. So I can try this connection. I don't think that one is. I think I got at least one more on that. So if I try... So now, quick easy way to do this is check our ones with right there. Okay. Oh, usually not that one. Nope. One more. I think that should snap in based on the color. Arms, edge, edge. These match up. Dad, why am I pushing? No, nope, that's obviously not. Okay, so here's going to be the extent of what will all fit. So. Let's do, set it here for now. Yeah, I got some sorting to do. Show you the type of sorting I like to do. Hmm. Some people like to do color first. Some people do shapes and people just work outside in. I'm going to first give myself my piles in front of me where I can reach them all. And then I'll sort into the middle of the table. And so you can see my piles and how I do it. And then you can tell me if you would do this the same. Fastest, probably not. It's relaxing for me. Push my piles over here for now. And I'll start pulling from them and making the pile. First, we're going to have our three-point pile and then outside edge we're going to do a one-point pile over here we're going to do two point so nibs or nubs no matter orientation we have a no point down here two point we're going to do two different piles we're going to do a side by side and we're going to do opposite corners we got our ones over here two two one, three, three, one, one, two, two, four, two, three, nine, two, one, two, two, one, two, three, and I dropped it. 
Catch the three I dropped. So two corner. Two, two. Two, two, three. Two, four, three, one. One, 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 three. So now I've created uh, pile sets of all the different potential shapes. So now when I walk around the board or I found certain sections, I'm more likely to find it because I know in general what shape it might be as I sort them or search for them. I like. particular shapes can only go into particular locations. Well, you know, okay, don't look at these types of twos, look at those twos, or look at those fours or, or threes. This is my preferred way of sorting. I know it's not the best way, because I probably sort through each type way too many times. But it suits me well enough. So I kind of like, I'm going to look through these real quick, this pile. And looking at the photos, we're going to have some red streaking. Blue and red happens a lot at the top. So this is most likely. And almost directly below that. So I'm going to leave that in, around there. Here's that match, because that streak it actually fits perfectly right into those two. Perfect. Got like a full black one, so that might go around one of the edges, kind of like up here. Whew. Called it. Perfect fit into that one. Like we got two fours, you can check their coloration, kind of quick, make quick estimates, knowing that the roundness is going to be more like this. Like it could be his knee around his knees. I'll set that aside, being unsure. So pretty black with edges of blue gives it an idea of being potentially around this edge. Hint of red. Might say, hey, we're higher up. Or oh, there's hints of red down here too. I want to hold on to that one. So now like Really good color option is this streak, extra streak of his knife blade. So digging through our singles, I don't see it right off. So I kind of set my piles and then do like a, uh, do many searches through each pile. For very specific shapes or colors. So like that, we got our blade. start looking for the darker black and blues for the obvious border edges look for the reds because they're going to be very specific sets around here the reds also have very particular, particular angles kind of like this one what was that spire shape shooting straight up and down we know when it's shoot, doing that Uh, 
So I also like to do a lot of box reference, what I should expect to be seeing. Like some of these sharper red lines. We're seeing a little bit of this blue splatter to, to color variation. So like we have a double here, double nib inside. So that tells us it's either a double nib, a single nib, or a zero nib. Because a double opposite nib, threes and fours, would not work there. So now we can just check our colors and no sets to see if we have any of that red pop out or that bright blue sticking up. I feel like that one looks like it matches there better. And then as you go, you're going to see things that you expect to see, things you don't expect to, to find at the same time. So you keep, leave your options open to find multiple things at the same time. So kind of like looking here, we know we're either going to have a double nib or single nib. This one is going to be a double nib or a triple nib. So it just tells me where to start searching. Or gives me a starting place each time. So like this, I might search my triple nibs for, an, for a red tipped nib. That's sitting sideways in black. Don't see that automatically over here. That allows me to start searching my double nib edges over here. Right here we have a nib red. So now, now that we've done that, I've set myself up here. I know it's a double nib, side by side, not opposite. Almost all black. There's one option that didn't fit. So I go to the next one. That's done. That's how you find it fast. So this blue, bright blue with red continuation. Looks like that right there. So this is either a triple nib or a double nib. Vertical orientation, a lot of red. So this one at most is a two nib. doing what I can to make use of all this red and the especially brighter red on the top corner and side. Looking for the brighter sparks of it and making use of the orientation issue I found before. Now that I'm seeing the edge of his cowl finally pop up. So right above his cowl should be just a little hints of red, but it's going to be more his arm in a semi-blue, bright blue. The crook of his arm might be that one, but that might be his knee instead. His knee does go under him.
And because we have the edge of his cowl, we can start also looking for the rest of his face. Kind of like that right there. The edge of his face can be more black. There we go. That we can show that this actually fits there. And so now we're just looking for a smaller connector. It's either a four nib side by side double or a triple nib, which I'm wanting to guess it's more likely to be a triple nib, like that one right there. So like this one right here is either a single nib or it's a no nib. Um, because my no nibs, I don't see any good black and reds. I'm going to assume a single nib which looks like that would fit. And like I talked about like with other pieces, you can start doing orientation on these because these are kind of elongated pieces. So you can kind of tell which direction they're likely to be set in. So I'm doing a few of these off to the side over here, as you can see, but so much space, I don't want to move my camera too much right now. I'll start turning these, which they may end up being upside down as I do this, but it saves you, it, it can help your brain think, Be like, oh, that makes sense, seeing it upside down or right side versus trying to think is, how do I turn that one to make it fit, will it fit type thing, just your mind can see things straight up and down or upside down a lot easier, typically then something turned 45 90 degrees and i say this more from my personal experience uh, your mind may work different than mine um, but being engineering uh, look for and computer programs 3d modeling and stuff i'm looking at things all day turning them and right side and upside down tend to be the easiest to see and so now we know his face is going to have a little bit more pop to it. So I can see that color was on that piece right there. So there might be specks of red up here. It looks like this one might have part of his arm with that red. Just slowly merge these pieces down and in. To camera view at least and then it just kind of merges together and you see a full picture so to me it's relaxing to occasionally do something like this kind of like if we see something here and it's either a three piece or four and it's like they're they either got three or a double or side by side double um let's see based on my kerning not that one. More black than anything. Okay, I can see the edge of his arm bracer with the sharp pieces on it. Worked out well right there for me. So we're looking for something that like, resembles his hand holding the edge of his knife. Should be pretty straightforward to notice if you look correctly and get the lighting right, of course. If you look at something through the lighting, it can be harder to tell. which my lighting kind of glares in multiple directions, so I've got no excuses for being slow or more, just enjoying the time doing this. And the music did kind of just pick up in a very ominous, striking way. That's not what I expected to hear next.
Okay, so like now what I've done is immediately said, okay, this piece right here is going to be a two nib corner, primarily black, possibly an edge of blue. And I have like one piece like that right now. A lot of this pre sorting really helps out, and our pictures are really coming together now. So here's the decision, do you go more the blues or do you go more the darkers? And then fill in which way. Of course, we still have some reds left. And of course, the more you do puzzles, the more quickly you can recognize certain corner shapes and how how likely it is to fit and merge into what you're looking to do here. Kind of like I'm seeing a couple of these shapes that have the double recess into them. Okay, I'm trying to identify which one might potentially fit here. Kind of like that one. Which is nice, and then you're getting to the same general shape into this next one. And you just start to see them and how they fit. I'm not guaranteed that you'll get it right every time, of course. I still mess up a lot. But like I just said, it's more about enjoying the process for what it is. This is going to be cutting across black and black here. The very horizontal like stripes. But they really do start to curve down.
So we're getting pretty close here. Everything you can see here is what's left for the puzzle itself. We just slowly make progress and enjoy what it's making. Well, there we go. A nice, relaxing 45 minute or so long just puzzle. 100 piece. Straightforward and easy enough to do. But a character that a lot of people like to see. And that was a nice, relaxing way to end my Monday. And, of course, end the stream.